Coast trains is a huge operation. Behind the scenes, a dedicated workforce graphs 24-7 to keep everything on track. We are the unsung heroes of the railway. And on the front line is an army of devoted ambassadors. I put your suitcase in so you're not standing there for a while. From whistleblowers <laughs> to breakfast chefs. Oh, me bacon! These guys and gals are the public face of the railway and they're primed for every eventuality. Apparently some suspicious youths just up around the cycle racks. Oh, look, your coat's all undone. Highly trained to deal with the best. If anybody wants the paper, I'll leave it here. And the worst that we, Joe Public, can throw at them. If you did this on an airline, you'd get to your destination and you'd be arrested. It's their job to keep calm and carry on. They reckon there's a total loss of powers, but being afraid of it, it couldn't get worse. Through good times and bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last train I'll ever dispatch in my life. I had one guy who said, can I have a poached egg? And I said, no, you can't have a poached egg. I said, it's because we've only got omelettes, so I do apologise, sir. And he went, no, no, I says, he says, I don't think you understand. Can I have a poached egg? And I went, I don't know what you would understand, that I've only got omelettes. And I, I had to say it quite sternly. And he went, but really, don't they come from the same place of chicken? And I went, well, they do, but I says, they're not made on a train, so... The, the omelettes are made and then they're brought on and I, I regenerate them. And he went, so you don't do poached eggs? And I just went, no, nah, no, nah, mate, no. Nah. How do you like your eggs in the morning? I like mine with a kiss. All aboard the full English breakfast club. Satisfied as long as I get my kids. Dishing up over 16,000 fry ups a year are top chef Mark and customer service assistant Karen. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's for rehearsal. <laughs> They might make for a lively Elton and Kiki tribute act now, but they weren't so sprightly when their shift began. It's 20 past four in the morning. <laughs> Mark's always very tired at this point, and I'm always very alive. Yeah. Morning, you all right? We're on the 045 from Newcastle to London King's Cross this morning. We stop at Durham, Darlington, North Allerton, York, Doncaster, Newark, Northgate, Grantham, Peterborough, and then London King's Cross. So, nine stops. We, nine stops, yeah? Nine stops. <laughs> um, eight of them we pick up and we do the service from. East Coast services start at 4.45 a.m., catering for sleep-starved commuters. 60 members of staff rose well before dawn to get this Newcastle to London train up and running. Coming alive now, I'm coming alive. Despite the cosy cooking area, Mark still has five different breakfast dishes up his sleeve. Karen, I hit the bits on the rosti, so I just smooth the rosti down. <laughs> The conditions may be cramped, but Mark wouldn't want to chef anywhere else. You've got your bonus to do a fantastic job, and you've got the job security because, you know, you, you refer to the railway as a job for life as well, because you just feel very secure in your job on the railway. Woo! It's um, This is typical. This is my toast. This is, this is Sue toast. Oh, it's lovely as you can see. When the heat's on in the kitchen, it's often Karen who keeps an eye on quality control. Could never ever serve anybody that, could you? I went to the job centre and they said to me, we've got two jobs here. Either one be a butcher, I won't join the railway. And I thought, well, transport sounds interesting to me. 
None of my family or relatives have ever been on the railway. I'm the first person in the family to work on the railway, so I'll go for it. I feel like an old railroad man getting on board at the end of the 47, yes, 47 years after taking that job, J.R. is now one of the York team's longest-serving members. He's done almost every job at the station. But the thing he loves best is dispatching trains. Over his five-decade-long career, J.R. has sent off over 50,000 services. Anybody for the London, you want to be further down, further down. Doors up. Today Doors. is a very important day. 8.43. Because after all those years on the job, okay, J.R. is retiring. Hello, Graham. Is this your last day? It is. I thought you would... Is that for me? Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're you a big mate of mine. You can't count on me, not one, two, three. It's all right, Celia. And one of York's regulars, train spotter Graham, is determined to mark this momentous occasion. Oh, my God. It's like Christmas all over. Oh, this looks interesting. Let's see what it is. Decanter. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much, Graham. And remember, I'm full of Scottish whiskey. I will do now. That's my card. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll treasure that. Good luck, goodbye from Graham. Train spotter. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, will miss him, but life goes on, doesn't it? For JR, it's going to be a long and emotional final day. It's hen and spectastic at Newcastle Station. <laughs> Until disaster strikes. I reckon there's a total loss of power. Never happens at the quietest of times, unfortunately. Spanning the length of Britain, the East Coast Line clocks up 19 million passenger journeys a year. Its staff have seen it all. I had a lady come into the station, and I could see she was, like, holding her face like this. And her husband ran over, and he went, excuse me, excuse me. I went, what's the problem? Can I help you? He went, uh, my wife's glass eyes popped out. He went, it's on the track. What had happened was her son was going away in the army or something and she'd cried that much that the eye had popped out. We took it back up and I actually helped the lady wash it. She put it back in <laughs> and I never laughed all the way through, but it wasn't until later on Glenn said to me, you kept your face straight all the way through that. He said, you even washed that glass eye. He went, if that's not going the extra mile, I don't know what is. <laughs> Jumping eyeballs are not the only bizarre items the East Coast staff have to contend with. We've had wooden legs, all sorts in our lost property, blow up dolls, everything. At York Station, Julie's been directing trains and playing mum to passengers for 14 years. What have you done? Lost your bag? Yeah, I've lost my bags. Where's your case? Oh, you're just going for day? Yeah, I'm off to the Shard Tower. Oh, look, your coat's all undone. All not right. <laughs> well, there I you think go. I, I did an emergency toilet from the oh. top. Now, when I was a boy, my mother pride and joy, she gave me a whistle, this is it. And no matter where I go, band of hope or pitch a show, my little whistle always makes a hit. A lady came to see. Julie's duties are wide and varied, and she's used to dealing with the unexpected. From leaving the children on the platform, um, people collapsing, injuries, everything. I just love it. Every day is different. Um, you get disruption, and it's just lovely. <laughs> Today, it's not so happy Abby who has caused the disruption. Just to let you know, I'm going to be a bit late because I've been an idiot and dropped my bags down the train line. <laughs> All right, I'll see you when I can. Did it just slip out of your hand? Ah. Oh. 
I was an idiot and had my bag on my suitcase and lifted it up to get into the carriage and it just fell down. Nightmare. It may just be a little handbag, but any item on the track signals major disruption. Hello, it's Julie Garney. Stop the um, services coming through platform three while I'm on the track. Yes, please. Thank you. Bye. I've got my high visible vest on. Um, I've got my boots on, trousers. I don't want to go down with a skirt on. <laughs> Show all my legs. I'm a hero like Robert De Niro. I'm no one I a man. I'm a hairdresser, so all of my equipment's all in my bag. And I've missed my train now. I'm on my way to do a photo shoot in Sheffield. Such an idiot. I feel really bad. <laughs> With an entire track out of service, Julie leaps into action. To the rescue, now, here I am. There you go. All right. You're welcome, Abby. That's all part of the service. All done, and the lady's got her bag back. <laughs> A mecca for stag and hen parties. <laughs> it's the last Friday of the month, payday, and hundreds of revelers are arriving at the station for the start of a big night out. <laughs> On the platform tonight is Daz man who's come across so many crazy costumes, he could open a fancy dress shop. It was last year, the year before, one lost there was these two tiger suits and, and lost property, and they'd been uh, left by, obviously, some stag party. So me and Mark put these tiger suits on, ran around the station. It was just absolutely funny as hell. Everybody was cracking up laughing. It was me and Collie just running around in these tiger suits. It was a right laugh. From early afternoon, there are hens aplenty flouncing on and off trains. You're getting married, mate. And ever alert to the call to action, Banana Man. <laughs> who's less alert than a superhero should be. I'd always wear clean pants, kids. <laughs> I was going to say she'll be a lucky girl, but he wasn't packing my train. <laughs> Dias has been working at Newcastle Station for 12 years, and payday Friday shifts are always the liveliest. The problems we get with stag and hen parties, we get a lot of delay off trains, because what they do is they're obviously just sitting to the very last moment. They hear the announcements on the train, but they're not really paying attention. Then when the train stops, they're like looking out the window, and they can see the Newcastle sign, and they say, we're here. All right, girls, we'll have to rush you. I've had instances where people have put the windows down and they've actually physically dived out onto the platform because obviously they've realised that it's, it's their station. The hell done in that? Daz has his hands full with a station full of party animals. <laughs> but his shift is about to get a whole lot harder. Ninety miles south at East Coast Control Center, there's high drama. A lightning bolt has hit some of the signals, and this could mean chaos for the network and for Daz. East Coast Control, Robin speaking. Basically, at about three o'clock, there was a thunderstorm south of Berwick. That's knocked out some of the signalling. What we've had to do is cancel trains at Edinburgh and cancel trains at Newcastle to stop sending trains towards the affected area. I reckon there's a total loss of power, so the next two trains I think will make it in, and then we might uh, not have nothing for our well. Delays are bad at the best of times, but on a busy Friday, they're disastrous. 17 trains an hour, each carrying around 400 passengers, are scheduled to pass through Newcastle today. With the service stalled, disgruntled passengers will not only get stuck on board, thousands could start to pile up on the station platforms. 
and you're talking tens of thousands of passengers and packing into the doorways as well. And obviously it's rammed, you've just got to see your passengers everywhere. A lot of people going home for the weekend, etc., going away for the weekend, you know, sod's law, but that's the way it is. Never happens at the quietest of times. Looks like Daz's payday Friday could become the shift from hell. In York, veteran of the railways, JR, has seen his fair share of crisis management. But today, his shift is not about controlling chaos, it's about saying goodbye. Because you're mine, I walk the line. There's three teams on the art station. To me, it's like my family. So I meet some regular, if I want for a drink, I'll see them somewhere. Go around to see them at their house, have a drink with them. Oh, yeah, they're all, uh, I'll keep friendly. Yeah, I'll always be there, always be my mates. All the best to you, darling. Take, ooh, you take counter. care. <laughs> when they left my house this morning, I thought, it's weird. When I come back here at 2 o'clock or whatever, That's I've it. finished. That's it. And this gentleman here is always giving me mints. Right, he looks after me on the suite department. See you later. There's one person who means more to him than all the rest. His teammate of 17 years and current boss, Paola. JR is loved, honestly, by everybody here. He's just always been the same. He comes into work positive, upbeat, always the same, never, never sad. Oh, what's that? Forever friends. And we will be. We yeah. will be always friends for the rest of yeah. our lives, Paula. OK. All right. Enjoy today. I know what that one now going up. You change locks. I'm only joking. Hey, <laughs> can't go in. Keep him out. They've changed our locks. He's gone. Change them. <laughs> we do actually change the codes on the door when people leave. <laughs> But it, it, it's, um, that's just what we do as, as part of process and security, but he'll never be, he'll never be shut out. As one of Paola's team takes his leave, another new recruit's life on the railway is just beginning. I was in my previous role as a, a fishmonger, and one of my customers was Paola, the station manager now, and uh, like watch saw me, thought I'd be good at the job. I got, you could say, poached. Um, it's a massive change for me, but it's the best decision I've ever made, to be honest. Paola might have poached Liam away from the salmon, but he's got a lot to prove before he's ready to dispatch trains like JR. At the moment, his main task is station security. Every hour, I have to do a full lap of the station. So I'm looking for anything suspicious, any hidden packages, all of them platforms, the travel centre, the car parks, the bike racks. I've got to check all that within one hour, and I've got to do that every hour for my full shift. Railway rookie Liam has to be extra specially vigilant. Apparently there's some suspicious youths just up around the cycle racks. They passed a few minutes ago um, drinking. I don't think they were probably old enough to drink, um, but the police are on their way anyway. I'm pretty sure they've cleared off. But uh, I have to go down this platform anyway, so... And the police have just gone down by the bike racks as well, so just to check those youths have definitely cleared off. Which it appears they have. And at random intervals also, the Department of Transport, they will, they will come and they'll test us. They can, and, and quite often do, plant something. So last time it was a small black hold all. They give us two hours, really, to find it. So they're the hide-and-seek experts, really. Did you, did you find it on that occasion? The last time, no, I didn't. So I really feel the pressure now to make sure next time they come that I've got to find it. So I think, yeah, if Liam's great at his job, Liam's going to find it. If Liam's on duty, we know we're safe. Yeah, no worries, Pav, I'll, uh, I'm on platform so I'll make way over, over. Liam has been called to check a security alert. I'm just had a message with some unattended luggage at the front of the station, so this one I've come in uh, useful in my money, so I'll have to have a look at that. 
the unattended bag could represent a major security threat. Liam is straight on the case. Yeah, as predicted, um, pretty much nothing. Nothing. No, I think we're all clear. Safe to fight another day. Problems pile up on payday Friday. And the more build-up of passengers as it is, then it becomes really dangerous. And while the hens make the best of a bad day, <laughs> it could be game over for the stags. The only person that caught the last train north was the stag. It's payday party Friday in Newcastle, and information controller Daz is in the middle of one of the most stressful shifts of his year. Everybody wants to start their weekend, but thousands of passengers are going nowhere fast. All I can do is ask you to wait a while. There's nothing moving at the moment at North and Newcastle. Okay. So if you have a seat in the waiting room or on the platforms, and I soon right. know someone we're going to come round, but listen to our announcements as well, yeah? Okay. If I have a seat in the weight room, I have a seat on the flat ones, and soon as we know, we'll let you know. Right, Listen to my announcement soon, madam, OK? All right, thanks very much. 90 miles south in the central control room is controlled chaos because of an unexpected lightning strike. It's 45 minutes. Who am I to stop thundering and lightning? <laughs> I'm afraid, you know, that does happen. The system's short out. And we, we don't end up with a situation unsafe, and we don't end up with a train heading into an area where there is no signalling at all. Four trains heading north from King's Cross and three trains heading south from Scotland have all been stopped in their tracks. There's a waiting room and that there if you want to keep warm and that up here. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. Cheers. The hardest thing is, obviously, the passengers all want to know what's going on. Until I, can, I don't know anything, I'll try to listen to that and keep the trains going at the same time as well as everybody thought of, so it makes it quite hard. Over 3,000 passengers are stuck on trains, and the number waiting at Newcastle Station is about to hit 1,000. It's up to Daz to keep calm and carry on. I do believe there's been buses ordered, but we'll obviously have to wait and see what happens in the next half an hour. It's so a good night out. It's a good night out in Newcastle, anyway. A very good night out. <laughs> Part of the city, yeah? <laughs> OK. Central control has to take action before the situation gets worse. Just bear with me. Nicola, November 19's ne nearly in Newcastle, so that could form Echo 21. The decision is taken to terminate all northbound trains at Newcastle and send them back down south, keeping the service running between Newcastle and London at least. Right, this is the 1558 to London. You can get on now. Anybody travelling on the 1558? So for Daz, it's all changed as his northbound trains have just become southbound. Right, let's get it away, let's get it away. All right, bud. No crew, no Buffy crew. I'm not worried about the Buffy crew, but we've got a gardener driver that'll do, yeah? Cheers, though, thank you. With the southbound passengers out of his hair, Daz has still to deal with the northbound passengers stranded on the other platforms. Their trains are still not running, but although many are dressed up with nowhere to go, some have come prepared. We're having the hens party We're having on the station. We're having a party. <laughs> <laughs> little sister's getting married, so every guy around is going to be crying their eyes out because this beautiful lady is taken. Well done, Nikki. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. If only the lads were as well organised. We're here on a stag do. 22 people, the only person that caught the last train north, Worse the stag. 
who's now at Edinburgh Station on his own in a kilt, just like Mel Gibson. <laughs> he looks estate and he's on his own. We're all a bit sad for him. <laughs> the, the one rule, the one rule is that no one leaves the stack alone and 21 other people left the stack alone. <laughs> we have completely dropped the ball. We don't know what to do now. We don't know how to get to Edinburgh. Yeah, we're completely lost. <laughs> You got me. Ah. Rebecca here doesn't know yeah, what to do. Rebecca. We're yeah, lost. Rebecca. So far, Daz has managed to keep a cool head, but as disruption continues, he starts to feel the pressure. The more trains are coming and terminate, the more passengers are going to have here. As you can see from them, there's quite a lot of people close to the edge, isn't that you know? And the more build-up of passengers it is, and it becomes really dangerous, and it's obviously a concern, you know. But being a Friday, it couldn't get worse. It kind of get worse, and a Friday. Two hundred and seventy miles away, down south at King's Cross, self-confessed trolley dolly Jack is preparing for showtime. And as long as I got my suit and tie, I'ma leave it off on the floor tonight. And it got fixed up too. Jack used to fancy treading the boards, but since starting his job on the railway, he's realised there's no more captive an audience than one trapped on a train. If I'm there and I'm having fun and I'm talking to the customers, I'm being a bit show busy, I'm having a bit of fun with them, then that makes my day go quicker. If they're then enjoying their journey because I'm being a bit silly, then that makes their journey go a bit quicker. Everyone has a nicer day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jack Allen, catering crew leader for your journey. I did performing arts when I was in um, college as an A-level, so, I mean, maybe it, pro it probably stems from that. For those passengers in standard class who do wish to remain seated, the trolley service is making its way through the train. Yeah, that's my stage. <laughs> Any teas, coffee, cold drink? Just make sure that's actually the right items, that I haven't charged you for something you've not got. Is that okay? No worries. I'll chuck that away for you if you want. It's not part of the receipt. I just like going through, chatting rubbish to people. I do it to confuse people. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Professional me. Any refreshments at all? Oh, sorry. I'm frying milk at people now. Yeah, sorry, I won't drop that one on you. That'd be really mean of me. It's kind of like manoeuvring a full shopping cart down, well, down a moving train. Oh, sorry, is that your bag there, sir? Yeah, sorry, that's all right. Sir, this is quite heavy. I don't want to damage anything. Until you get the hang of it, you're constantly crashing into people's seats and nearly running people over which um, most people tend not to be too happy about. You wanna go, you always wanna go, you wanna go somewhere where you don't know. And while mastering his trolley act, Jack's bumped into all sorts. We actually had Prince Philip travelling with sort of six or seven of his security detail, <laughs> who were mildly terrifying. I was very worried that I would get something wrong. I was worried that the train would jolt and I would get coffee everywhere. Luckily, that didn't happen. Um, I did that really awkward and annoying thing that when you're talking to someone, your voice breaks. <laughs> Can I get you any coffee, sir? Oh, no. Eagle-eyed staff might even get to spot their favorite celeb somewhere along the line. Hugh Grant was trying to get into the toilet, which was closed for painting. So I took my chance, ran up, asked him if he'd like to use the toilet, and took him upstairs to the office. I found myself in the staff kitchen with him. He asked me where the toilet was, and when I went to show him, nothing came out of my mouth, because I was so sort of in awe. We have a sign on the back of the toilet door now. Hugh Grant sat here. It's not just Hollywood stars and royalty who frequent the East Coast line. We're on the 11 o'clock from King's Cross to Edinburgh and uh, it stings up here. Rocks! I think I've got a bit of an eye for it, if I'm honest. It's not that I'm on the lookout, but I'd, I usually do pick up pretty quickly if I see someone famous. You don't have to your body to the night. Mr. McFarchandy, but Paul McCartney was on station a few weeks ago. Bobby Robson, I might add, he's fantastic. He was in when, obviously, before he passed away. Jeremy Paxman, I used to work at Berg for a while. He was really nice. 
big bloke, like really tall bloke, you know, when you get to see people in like real life, you don't realize that some of them are either small or some of them are really big, you know. And some of them are larger than life. If anybody wants the paper, I'll leave it here. Recycled. Thank you for a lovely journey again. Bye de bye, Sue. Next leg of the journey, Skegness! Bye. <laughs> Keeping cool with famous faces is one thing, but one VIP who gets everybody hot under the collar is a customer so important they have to go completely incognito. She, who shall not be named or even seen, is what's known as a mystery shopper. Mysterious by name and blurry by nature. I just say something to you. I have no idea. Today is Bianca, Jack, and Beth's turn to be spied on, but they don't even know it. I'm definitely a people person, as you can probably tell. I can't stop talking, so it's the perfect job for me. I just, I just enjoy it because every day is different. You never, you never meet the same sort of people. Bianca and I get on well. She talks an awful lot, but then that's Bianca. They think they could spot an undercover agent a mile off. You can tell. Oh, some of them, some of them can be sort of obvious. They'll be writing things down. They'll be sitting in certain carriages. They're lost for specialities. Yeah. I wouldn't say go the extra mile, but they'll ask you to sort of, oh, it, it, oh, can I have a bottle of water? And you say, yeah, no problem, I'll bring that down for you. And as long as you bring it back, sort of, they know things like that. But today, Bianca and Beth's secret service radar is way off course. We had one guy that was on once. We were going to Leeds. He um, came up from London, got off at Wakefield. We came straight back half an hour later and he got back on again. <laughs> we were sort of all stood on the train going, I don't think you did much while you were in Wakefield, did you? <laughs> But m most of the time, you can't really tell who they are. So, will their customer service make the grade? Did Bianca and Beth's onboard performance impress the mystery shopper? They seemed like a really nice team. They worked well together, they worked hard. No, they were good, they were really good, and they were cheerful with it, and they obviously wanted you to enjoy it. Daz tries to keep his spirits up. I stink the booze. Somebody probably complained that I've been drinking. <laughs> and JR faces the final curtain. That's the last train I'll ever dispatch in my life. It's all right. Yeah. After 47 years of loyal service, JR is working out his last ever shift. That's got to be worth a party. Oh my god. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, look at this. Fantastic. My favourite is pork pies. My oh, God. It's a fantastic. Oh, my God. Oh, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best, John. It'll be OK. I'll be all right. And now... The end is near. Da, 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 da. I did it my way. Oh. <laughs> but JR's final day is far from over. And yeah, yeah. Now the end is near. He's still got his last ever train to dispatch. All right. I'm feeling all right, but it's a shame it's going to be my last service to dispatch. Flat one season goes out of the platform. My last train for the rest of my life, so it's going to be emotional for me. Very upset about it, really. 
JR dispatched his first train in 1987 and he's seen off over 30 a day ever since. That's first stop, London, sir. Coach where, sir? E. E, there it is, just behind you. OK. Much more than this. Here we go, my last train. Watch it out, make sure it's okay. He's passing his own, he must know it's my left train. She goes. Yes, it was That's it, is it, Marla? That's the last train I'll ever dispatch in my life. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Hey. A bit sad about that. Anyway, I'll be all right. JR's 47 years of service to the line and to Joe Public is complete. But back at Newcastle, Daz's job is far from over. It's payday and a hen and stag do Friday, and after two hours of delays in both directions, the first train from Edinburgh finally arrives. The train needs to be cleaned quickly before it is turned around and sent back down the line. And Daz has drawn the short straw. Basically what's happened here is that the last stand party, like some stand parties do, to set the trip with trains, like they're a tip. And it's just disgusting this. I mean, these passengers have been eight passengers, maybe ten of them sitting in these seats now. Uh, I'm just gonna try and get what I can off here just to make it look presentable at least, but I should, I've got no tape, I would normally just tape the seat off. But I mean, look at this man, it's unacceptable behaviour, isn't it? If you did this on an airline, you'd get to your destination and you'd be arrested, simple as that, because that's what they do on the airlines, but we have to put up with it. I stink the booze. Somebody probably complain that I've been drinking. <laughs> Not we can do, we'll just have to get it away. I haven't been drinking mine. I want to eat the day after that. <laughs> and at long last, there's good news from the control centre about the north running trains. Sierra 2 the 1400 Kings Cross Aberdeen's just arrived in platform 2, so that should clear as many northbound passengers as possible. Trains will be running normally between. Um, Newcastle and Berwick uh, in a few in a few minutes. Finally, the whole line is up and running again, and Daz can see light at the end of the tunnel. The way things are going, by about seven o'clock, we should have most passengers away by then, you know. So it should be good. We're getting there now. We're getting there slowly but surely. We're starting to get there, yeah. But there's one final spanner in the works. That's uh, this is a 16, 1725. This one. No, disregard that. It's, okay. it's, it's a glitch, all right. That's a 1725. The controller might say yes, but the computer says no. He's going to try and update it somehow. The computer thinks it's a different train. I know. Don't, don't, it will be. It's a 1725, sir. I'm getting them to do something about that. Okay. How are you, little man? You all right, mate? I'll just push it to the back there for a couple of seconds, all right, darling? Let me off, because I haven't got a ticket. Believe it or not, it'll have me for it, yeah? It is, sir, yes, yes. 
after an especially hectic Friday evening shift, no one deserves the relief of a weekend break more than Daz. We've got everything back to normal. Uh, we're really happy everybody's buzzing again. I am a bit to see the rest of the night out now. And I'll be off for a drink myself tonight and take my good lady with somebody eating that, yeah? There's Peter, you know. He's got a date on Peter, yeah? <laughs> with happy passengers finally on the move from Newcastle, back in York, there's one last surprise for one of the station's longest serving staff members. It's a sad day for me. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a sad day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Bring me sunshine in your smile. Oh, I'm upset now. I am happy though. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you all. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. I won't forget you as long as I live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paula. Okay. Oh, that's great. Come on, then. Hey, thank you. JR has absolutely loved it. He didn't expect any of the little surprises that we gave him. We've given him a, a nice send off and we'll see him. We'll look after him. See you later. Bye bye. Happiness, so much joy you can give to each brand new bright tomorrow. Morning.